If you're new to painting in watercolour, then this video will give you some tips to remember and some skills to practice. Hit that like button and be sure to subscribe because today I'm going to be talking about watercolour edges and how I use them and I post new tutorials like this every week. One of the questions I often get asked is how do I control my edges in my watercolour painting? That's a really good question because controlling edges is one of the most important aspects of watercolour painting. A watercolour painting, or really any painting, is going to have a mixture of hard and soft edges. This is a piece of Arsh's cold press watercolour paper. And in case you don't know, I just want to show you what a hard edge looks like. So I'm just painting the watery wash onto the dry paper. I'm not going to touch it. And straight away, my wash has formed hard edges around the perimeter. Now I'm going to dampen the paper with some clean water. And the dampness of the paper will help me create some soft edges. A soft edge is one where there's no defined edge to the mark that you've made. And you usually paint soft edges on damp paper. So this one on the left has got the hard edges and the one on the right has got the soft edges. Here on this Galar painting of mine I've used a mixture of hard and soft edges. And to try and draw attention to the Galar's face I've tried to put most of my hard edges around the head there. So let's take a look at how I painted some of these edges. So here I'm just going to start painting some hard edges on the wing and I'm just using Payne's Grey and I'm painting just onto the dry paper. My paint is watery but it's got a lot of pigment mixed into it. And you can see that all the marks that my brush is making have got hard edges. But down here on the body I want the mark to be softer so I'm just wetting an area with some water and then I'm going to put some paint onto that damp spot. And the dampness of the paper just keeps the edges of my paint soft. Here I'm just pulling some paint up onto the dry paper just to create the feather separations. But on the dampness of the paper underneath the feather I've got lovely soft edges. So now I'm going to come in with a slightly darker colour onto that damp paper. And again, the dampness of the paper just keeps that edge soft. Here's another painting of mine where I've used a mixture of hard and soft edges. This is one of my favourite rose paintings. So along the front here, I've just painted some water underneath where I'm painting and now I'm just painting the pink paint across the watery edge and you can see that I've got a hard edge on one side and a lovely soft edge on the other. One thing to remember with soft edges is that you want to make sure that your paint line lies within the boundary of the water that you've laid on the paper. Otherwise you're going to get a hard edge wherever the water stops. So you can see here on this shape that I've kept the paint within the boundaries of the water. I talk about this in my latest online class when I was painting the background on this chrysanthemum painting. So I wanted lovely soft edges on my background. So here I'm just painting the background with some water. Now my water line comes to here, but when I put the paint on, I won't put it past about here. That way the paint will be well within the boundaries of the water and I won't get any hard edges forming. So you can see that my water line is here 
but my paint remains well within the edge of the waterline. So then when I'm ready, I just wet the rest of it. So I keep wetting the paper as I go and then I apply a little bit more paint and stay well within the boundaries of the water. Do you always have to paint wet on wet to get soft edges? No, you don't. I'll show you what I did in this rosella painting of mine on one of the feathers. So here I am just painting on the dry paper. Now I've got a hard line here, but I don't want that. So I've just got my damp brush and I'm just rubbing it along the edge of my paint just to soften it. And that gives me a soft edge there. I've also done that on this rose painting. So here again, I'm painting on dry paper. Now up here on this part of the petal, I want a hard edge, but further down, I want a soft edge. So I'll show you what I do. So I'm fine with the hard edge up here in the corner, but down here where I am now, I want the paint edge to be softer. So I put it on the dry paper. So then I just take my damp brush and I just wipe the edge of the mark. So you can paint on dry paper and use a damp brush to soften the edge. Sometimes you might want to have two brushes going at once. You put the paint on with one brush and you have the other one ready to soften the edge straight away. So I'll give you a better look at it here. I'm just painting a mark on dry paper. And then I wash the paint out of my brush and I dab the brush onto a towel just to get the excess moisture off. And then I use the damp brush just to run it along the edge where I want the softer edge. I may need to re-wet my brush and then take the moisture out of it again and have another go. So you can see how that edge is softened now just with the damp brush. So there are a couple of things to remember. You've got to do it straight away as soon as you've made the mark on the paper, otherwise it will dry and you'll have trouble removing the paint. The other thing to remember is that your brush should be just damp. If it's too wet, then you risk making another waterline that the paint will flow into and then you'll get another hard edge. So I'll paint another mark here on the dry paper. And then I'll wash the paint out of my brush, but this time I'm not going to dab it on the towel. And then I try to soften the edge and you can see what's happening. There's way too much water on my brush and the paint's rushing into that wet spot. So it's really important to just use a damp brush when you do this. Sometimes when you paint with watercolour, you might have problems where the paint dries darker around the edge of the area that you've been painting. Some of my students have mentioned this to me. So on this shape here that I painted earlier, you can see that there's a dark edge around the perimeter of the shape. So if you want to try and avoid that, and you're going to paint on dry paper, you have to try and paint your wash as evenly as you can. And try not to fuss with it too much once you've laid the paint down. So don't keep going over it and over it with your brush. So I think what's happening when you get the dark edge around the perimeter of your shapes, I think that there's probably too much water on the paper and it's pushing the pigment out to the edges and you might also have puddles forming on the paper and what happens is it dries quicker around the edges than it does in the middle so I've used a fair amount of water on this one and now I'm going to put some more water on it as though I was fiddling with my wash so there's a lot of water there I'm 
more than I need, probably. So we'll see what this shape looks like when it's dry. This is the way I like to work when I paint a wash. I dampen my paper first with some clean water and I make sure that I put the water on as carefully and as evenly as I'd paint the paint. So I take my time when I put the water on. I don't rush and just slap it on. And when I finish putting the water on, I check to see if there's any puddles on the surface. And if there is, I'll use my brush just to sop some of that excess moisture up before I put my paint on. I also use a smaller brush and I take the water right to the edge of whatever it is I'm painting. So to me, the application of the water is just as important as the application of the paint. And then it just makes my paint go on a lot easier. And I've got more time because the paper's damp and I'm not worried about hard edges forming in my paint. This pansy painting will be a new tutorial on YouTube very soon. So this is what I'll do here on this piece of paper. I'm just going to paint some water into the shape first. Again, I do it carefully. And I get it nice and evenly damp. I make sure there's no great puddles anywhere. And you can see the water on the paper there. And then I put the paint on and it goes on nice and smooth. Now if I want this to be darker, all I have to do is wait for it to dry and I'll just give it a second coat. Just doing the same thing. So if you're troubled by dark edges on your washes, there could be a number of factors that are contributing to it. Another factor could be your paper. I use Arsh's paper and it's 100% cotton and it has a slow absorption rate. This allows me plenty of working time so that my washes are more controllable. If it happens to you and you really don't like it and you think it's spoiling your painting, you can use a, a damp bristle brush. This is just a stiff brush and you can gently rub over the, the pigment that's a bit darker and then use a tissue to blot it. So let's have a look at that on this shape here. So I'm just gently rubbing with this bristle brush. It's just got a little bit of water on it. And then I dab with a tissue. I'm just trying to take off those dark edges around the perimeter of the shape. I'm trying to minimize them more than anything. So just a gentle rub because you don't want to damage your paper. Unfortunately, when you do this, sometimes you might remove some of the pigment where you don't want to remove it. So if this happens, what you could do is just give it another coat of paint. So just paint a wash of water over the top and then recoat it. And just see if that helps. So I'm just painting another layer of paint over the top. But this time I'm painting wet on wet. That just helps in the application of the paint. Okay, so let's see what these look like when they're dry. I actually prefer the look of this shape here as it's dried than I do these two that have been worked evenly. Personally, I quite like those qualities of watercolour. I think that's what makes it such a beautiful medium to use. So don't be disappointed with yourself if the edges of your watercolour painting don't dry exactly as you want them to. With practice, the control and adjustment of your watercolour edges will become subconscious. You won't even think about what you're doing, you'll just do it automatically. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.